This right here is my latest eBay purchase. It's a 20 inch iMac. Oh, probably made somewhere in 2007, most likely August. So it does meet the bare requirements to run OS X 10.11. And uh, all it needs is a new hard drive, which is why I got it for about $130. So I'm going to be going through all the disassembly stages of this computer and how to put a new hard drive into it and hopefully it'll all work. Step one is going to be to remove this protective glass cover which is actually pretty simple. All you got to do is get these little suction cups. I got these from Hover Freight. Attach them here and here and should you should be able to pull off the glass which is held on by a bunch of magnets. Shouldn't be too hard, hopefully. There we go, that was pretty easy. Step, I'm gonna be removing the RAM access door, which is located right underneath here. It's one small Phillips head screwdriver, we pulling that out. Right there. There it is. Now that I have the round door removed, I'm going to be laying the computer flat and taking out all these T8 screws along the side of the computer. Just so you know, the four on the bottom are actually the longest ones, just to keep that in mind when you're putting it back together. Now, so I don't lose these screws, I'm going to be placing them into this magnetic bowl. It's going to help me keep track of all of them. Now that I've already removed all the T8 screws from around this iMac, I'm going to gently pull it from here. Just try and loosen it. I try to. Okay, so now the mod the front bezel is off. Next thing to do is going to be to remove this connector right here. That pretty much connects the screen to the rest of the computer. So there's two Torx T6 bolts, one here and one on this side. Remove both of those. We can pull up on this black tab. What? One is. Oh, yep. Smiley. I'm totally keeping that on video. She really seen in. Can't see anything. Well. Really? Yeah, you need a better light. Yeah, I don't have a better light. That's issue. What are you talking about? Here with this. Pepper. Where's Pepper? You want to use a security light? Let's see if it makes a difference. Yeah, you need a better angle because this sucks. 
you need to be shooting like right above. Yeah, I know. <coughs> I know. Okay, so now that I've already removed this connector right here, next step is going to be to remove these eight Torque T8 screws. Those are what's going to be holding in the connector or the display. Okay, so before we lift off the display, there are a couple things we got to take off as in connectors. There's a temp display temperature sensor right behind this speaker. You're going to fish that out and take it disconnected before you fully take out the display. There's going to be two inverter board connectors here. You're going to take those two off. There's also going to be one right, or two right up here. We're going to gradually take those off while we're taking out the monitor. Once they're all all five of them are disconnected, then we can lift them to do fully lift up the monitor. Okay, so right here is the the display port temperature cable I was speaking of. When you take it out, it should be routed into this fan, but mine wasn't making me think that this computer had already been open and taken apart. Up next are the two inver inverter board wires, which are right underneath. Let me get the camera off that and show you. Now underneath right here, you can see the two inverter board wires. Those two wires will need to be disconnected. Just pull them apart with your fingers. And you, back there you can see the other two inverter wires. Those lost and need to be removed. Now it should be free to remove. Oh, there is no hard drive. Huh. So that happened. I did not see that one coming. At all, actually. Hmm. That might change things a bit. Well, it doesn't even have the Nani hardware for the SSD, so it's our, the regular running brackets. We'll see what I can do. So, since there's no hard drive in this computer, it does uh, slightly put a wrench in my plan to get it running by the night. Because what I was going to do is I was just going to have the original hard drive mounting bracket, which should have been on the hard drive that was in here, and hook that on to the SSD. But since there is no original hard drive bracket, I'm going to have to get creative. So this is the SSD I'll be using, it's a scan disk SSD Plus. The same one I'm using in my MacBook Pro laptop that I rebuilt. The video on that of that is on my channel. I'll put an annotation right on my hand if you want to click on that and watch it, or if you want to click on that later, you'll see it. I'll put the link in the description. If you want to see more stuff like this, just subscribe and do all that stuff. The issue is, this the hard drive space, that's the hard drive, so how do I not this without the correct components? I'm also thinking of just doing the sleeve tape thing like I did last time with the MacBook. So this won't be moving around, so it shouldn't be an issue. So we're doing that. Like so. 
Okay, so since this computer doesn't have any of the original hardware mounting stuff that I was going to use, and since it is a small SSD with no internal components that move, I'm just going to tape it on. I'm not too worried about it. It should be fine. So sticky tape to the rescue again. It's official. I have sticky taped a hard drive inside an iMac. Oh god, I can feel the internet hate coming for me. Well, I'm just gonna start reassembling everything, putting the screen back on, and doing everything else. It should boot up now just fine. But this does pose a new question, which is when I first bought this iMac, I powered it on to see if it'll work fine. And before I would get to the screen, it started something started to spin. Originally, I thought it was an old hard drive with the damage in it. Turns out it's not, so I'm gonna guess that there might be a disc inside this super drive. I wonder what the kind of disc that is. So now I'm gonna put the screen back on this computer. Okay, so now I've run into another small problem. Now these inverter cables were, to my knowledge, all the same kind of cable. They both these little connectors with no identifying markings. They all look the same. And there's no color matching on these inbound con or the con the connectors coming off the computer. And don't mind the noise. That's just my dog eating. So I'm going to guess that it doesn't matter how you plug them in. I hope that's true because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug them in. Which are way they plug in. We'll reroute this cable into this fan the proper way. That's in. Next up is, these, is going to be these torque screws that go into the sides of the screen. Just made a silly mistake. I had two of the inverter connectors that go to the screen that were stuck on top of the super drive. This was causing a clearance issue, which is why I wasn't able to put all the screws in. So I moved the inverter connectors off to the side next to the super drive, and I've also moved these ones down over here to an empty space. So now I shouldn't have a problem getting the screws all in. Hopefully. There's no two screws up here, those are for the bezel. It's only these ones right here. All eight of the screws that are holding the display are in. We'll put the two just those two screws that go on this port right here. For those T6 screws. Okay, so uh, I thought I was recording me putting this bezel back on, but apparently I wasn't. So what you want to do is just take out, take all those Torx T8 
Torx screws, the, the four longest in the bottom, and then just go around and put them in. I'm at the last step of putting the RAM door in before I boot and post the computer, see if it's working. Okay, so now the glass is officially back on the computer. I can call this hard drive install done. And begin to form out new clean install of OS X 10.11. Keep suction cups like that. Now this right here is probably the most important part of the whole install. It is a 10.11 dutable USB key. I'll pop it in the back and see how this all works. Now again, this is a mid. This is a mid 2007 iMac 20-inch. It should be able to boot into. Oh, it's just another one. Oh, that's okay. right, it. Let's turn the sky on. We're just holding on from here. The fan is loud, man. Keyboard mouse again. Okay, so this is it. 20 inch iMac 2007 running OS X 10.11. About to get an update. Yes. Right there. Well, I'm gonna update it to 10.11.4, and I was well originally I thought I was recording the the update procedure, but my phone battery died. So if you really want to still see how to do a clean install on a new hard drive with OS X 10.11, I did make a video with when I did it to my MacBook Pro and I'll put the annotation for that one right here on this hand or on this general modernist just click on the screen or look down in the description below if you want to watch it at the end but this is pretty much it it's currently running 10.11.2 once all the updates are done it will be at 10.11.4 Again, it's running a 240 gigabyte SSD. Currently has three gigs of RAM. I do plan on updating that or upgrading that to the full six that is unofficially supported. And it's also got a 2.4 gigahertz dual no Core 2 dual processor. So it's a pretty capable little machine. It's not the most powerful thing in the world, but it can handle itself. And I'm gonna be giving this one to my dad and having him use this as his main computer. Because right now he has this ancient Dell XPX running Windows Vista and uh, they want more money than what I paid for this to update to Windows 10. So I decided just to build this computer or fix this computer up. I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Let me show you that awesome background real quick.